Hello and welcome to Somerville Lady Highlanders basketball action on Somerville Educational Channel 15. We are covering the annual Highlander Hoop Fest with the consolation game this evening between the Somerville Lady Highlanders and the Font Bon Academy Lady Ducks. Hello, I'm Todd Harmon alongside Ben Holt. And uh, we have a, an interesting consolation game. Some teams who have a tra tradition of championships in this, in this tournament. Eight of the 14 previous tournaments. These two teams were the champions of Font Bon, six-time uh, Hoop Fest champions, and of course the Highlanders, two-time champions. Um, of course, both teams, younger teams, seeing their seasons come together and seeing some growth having to uh, uh, come about here in the early season for both teams as the young uh, Lady Highlanders, only three seniors on that team, and the Font Bon uh, Lady Ducks, only one senior on their squad. What are a couple keys uh, to this evening's uh, game? Uh, well, you get, did have some positive things from the last game for the Lady Highlanders to build on. For a team that's kind of struggled to score, though, surprisingly, defensively, I think the big key of this game is going to be cutting down on those turnovers that led to so many easy baskets in their last game and getting back on defense. That's really what you got to look at. And then inside on the offensive end of the floor, using your size advantage. Absolutely, no question about that. As we look at these two teams, the uh, Lady Highlanders seem to have a, a little bit of a size advantage on the interior. Good evening, we definitely and saw in the uh, loss to Hampshire, uh, the, the loss to Hampshire uh, was a 66 to 34 Highlander loss for the Lady Highlanders. Tonight, and it was a situation where the uh, Red Raiders of Hampshire came out and they were just some flying up and, and down the court in terms of transition baskets right off the bat. Lots of fast break baskets coming off of those turnovers that you spoke about from the Lady Highlanders. Absolutely, you're going to have to supporting decisions by coaches and time. officials. Showing you were rolling. Interesting to see how and the, the Lady Highlanders come out defensively in this matchup. Um, uh, you were able to see some of the uh, Lady Ducks uh, playing against Needham. That was a loss for them in the, uh, er, in the first round, a 48 to 36 loss for Fontaine um, against the uh, Needham Rockets. So, uh, what did you see out of Fontaine? And now you're and looking at them for the Ducks. Well, I think this is going to be a really even game, to be honest with you, and uh, I'm excited to see what happens. Freshman right. number four, so move guard Annabelle. To the introduction Leonard. of the players. As we talked about the uh, Lady Ducks, Junior, a, a work guard, in progress, much five, like the Lady Highlanders Colleen early in this season. Hewitt. The uh, Lady Ducks 0 and 2 on the season with a 55 47 Senior loss to Coleman. And guard then that, number 12, uh, 48 36 Tori loss Barakas. to Needham in the first round. And of course, the Lady Highlanders Freshman, 0 and 3 on the guard, season so far 15, with their uh, 66 34 loss to the Red Rockets of Hampshire. Junior center, number 22, Captain Shehaley Monahan. And they are coached by Claire Murphy. And now your starting lineup for your Somerville Highlanders. Forward, number five, Malina Emitel. Pimitel, one of the uh, players that I thought was very impressive with the second Forward, half of the matchup number 20, against the uh, Red Raiders on Emerson. the side. Absolutely. Once the, they turned up the aggression on the offensive end, getting to the basket, you really saw them start to turn it around. Sophomore number 23, Gabriel Thompson. <laughs> Senior number 25, Haley Williams. Haley Williams, one of the senior leaders for this team. And senior Look captain at number 15, from her. Alicia Hatchy. Along and with Alicia Hatchy. Mr. Paul O'Halloran. An all-star goalie for the, the Highlanders soccer team and also a senior leader here on their uh, basket basketball team as well. We will now pause and honor America with the playing of our national anthem.
right, so we are set for the consolation game in the 15th annual Highlander Holiday Hoop Fest as the Somerville Highlanders take on the Funk Bone Academy Ducks this afternoon into the evening here in Somerville. The officials for tonight's game, we have uh, Kristen McDonald along with uh, Jesse Fanuelli. for the opening tip. Tip is controlled by Fontbonne. Nice job on the interior there. Great job defensively by Gabriella Thompson. Well, so far so good. Little bit of that height advantage already working for the Lady Highlanders. As Jen Cremoni brings it on across the timeline, she pass it off. There's Pimentel with the drive already. A nice offensive board though, and a good finish by Gabriella Thompson, and that's exactly what the Highlanders need to do with that height advantage. So way too little of that last time good sign that they're already getting the inside working on offense. Out of bounds along the baseline. It's going to go back to Fontbonne. Nice corner three there from the uh, senior Bonnie captain for Fontbonne, Tori Borikas. Turns it over, trying to get the interior pass down to Thompson. Thompson there for the rebound of the miss. Good job by Somerville getting back defensively there as uh, Alicia Hatchie was right there in the passing lane able to cause the turnover. Imagine Coach might have had a few things to say about that at uh, <laughs> post game after the uh, Hampshire game. Seeing them being a lot more responsible getting back on D early today. Pimentel's interior pass is knocked away and there's that fast break. Fontbonne able to get the re offensive rebound and the foul is Balls called. Number 20, Jen Cameroni, her first. It's going to go against Jen Cremoni. First team foul. Another nice block on the interior by Thompson. Once again, turnovers are a difficult situation here for the Highlanders. They have to get the ball down to Hatchie, though. She gets the shot up, but it's no good. Nice job. Felt there was a good job there, a nice hustle job, but uh, the officials saw a uh, foul there as they call that one against uh, Haley Williams. They're already falling into a trap that we saw last game with them being not quite careful enough with the ball. And uh, it's not even necessarily a matter of them cutting off the passing lanes. The hands are in the way, they just keep passing right into it. 
Lance Hatchie's going to get called for the foul on that one on the reach in. Fouls on some of those at number 15, Alicia Hatchie, her first third team foul. Coach O'Halloran speaking to the official uh, Jesse Fanuelli, letting him know he's not necessarily in agreement with some of these fouls, I believe. Bump on leads here by a score of five to two. There the bump on forces the jump ball. They're going to get the uh... got to have someone taken in. to it, checking into the game. We noticed a couple outside shooters during the warm-up for uh, Font Bon calling to it one of those. We've already seen the uh, outside shooting ability as uh, they've not been shy about taking three-point shots. Not at all. They're at uh, a few of them are on the floor right now. A couple of the people we saw nailing a lot of outside shots, not just a couple. Something. There was a series. And that being said, you might want to let them have those shots. Not necessarily completely undefended, of course, but if you keep the inside locked down, you've already seen it so far. Make sure you get those rebounds. You're going to have, I mean, already off to a much better start. No doubt about that. A score of 5-2 to two right now. The Lady Highlanders trailing here with five minutes remaining in the first quarter of play. We have our first time out on the floor as... Uh, we saw Melina Pimentel with a nice block there right before the uh, timeout was called. But yet again, we're seeing the, the uh, Highlanders struggling with the ball control, struggling with being able to keep control of the ball. We're also seeing the, uh, the Lady Ducks coming out with a full court press, really trying to take advantage of that and to keep the speed of this game up and get the fast break points. Well, the Lady Highlanders are losing the effort battles right now, and they're, they're going to have to turn that around to get a better result than the last time out. So Fompon will be inbounding to the left of the basket. Tori Barakas will inbound for the Ducks. Barakas was right out there. Hits another corner three-pointer. It looked like her left foot may have been on the line from my angle, but uh, she got the three-pointer. Too easy. Got to get a hand in her face. Bump on trying to push the action down floor. Another three-pointer put up by Fompon is no good. Nice rebound there by Jen Cremoni. Able to get the personal foul as well. Howard, her first, first team foul. And the outside shot is good for Annabelle Lernard. Fompon leads by a score of 10 to 2. Cremoni trying to work the ball to the interior. Another turnover for the Lady Highlanders. The Lady Highlanders, the, the offensively, they've got to help Cremoni out. Cremoni's coming down floor and she's trying to find some people to pass the ball to, but nobody's really stepping forward to receive those passes. We've seen two times in a row now, the thump on defender able to step directly in front of the offensive player for Somerville. Not a lot of drive to the ball from the uh, Lady Highlanders. Uh, a little bit of blame to go all the way around. Hopefully not seeing too much finger pointing yet. Got to stick together. Start working into your offensive sets. 
the steal once again for Fompon. Colleen Tuit gets the steal. She passes it off, misses the layup though on the give and go. We're gonna have another foul called against the Highlanders. It's gonna go against Jennifer Cremoni. Number 20, Jen Cremoni, her first, second, fourth team foul. That's her second foul. She's accrued here in the first half of play. 321 remains. And the free throw is good by Shaley Monahan. Moreo just checked in for Cremoni. Seems the Highlanders will be switching up ball handling duties. Second free throw is good. 12 to two now the score. And Somerville trying to get her, their offense flowing a little bit. So get the ball to Hatchie. Another pass anticipated by Fontbon and they get the steal. Nice job there looking for the trailer as uh, Tori Barakas was trailing that play and was able to pick up the uh, foul. Number 10, Andrea Rayo, her first, fifth team foul. Foul goes against Rayo, that's her first of the game. Barakas' first shot is no good. Too close for her apparently. Yeah, she's hit two corner threes, <laughs> one from each corner so far today. Second free throw is good. Gives her seven points on today's game so far here in the first quarter. Full court pressure really giving the Lady Highlanders trouble. Heady play there by Rayow as she was able to put it off a thump on uh, defender's foot when she was pinned up against the timeline. Sometimes you just gotta take what the defense has given you. Way to keep the play alive. Live to fight another day out there. Good job by Hatchie coming to get that ball. Shot by Hatchie is no good. Good offensive rebound underneath. Getting the foul is Haley Williams fighting underneath for the rebound. Number 15, Amanda Christiani, her first, second team foul. Williams' first free throw is good. <laughs> Gabriella Thompson takes a seat on the bench. As Tamika Michelle comes in. Williams' second free throw is off the rim. Rebounded by Fompon. Good, good positioning there by Williams as she gets the offensive board. Michelle, and Michelle with the bank. Just got to play it off like you meant it. Foul called down in the corner as Rayow was going to pick up her second personal of the game. Some of those at number 10, Andrea Rayo, her second, sixth team foul. Joy Barakas driving to the rack that time. They 
as the Highlanders got out defensively looking to prevent that outside shot, but that time she was able to drive to the basket and make it. And there's that back in by Michelle. Well, you got to respect the three, but you also don't want to get taken with a pump fake. You saw Barikas just having her way with the defense right now out there. Foul was on Haley Williams, by the way. That's her second personal. So three Highlanders already with two personal fouls here in the first quarter of play. Actually, no good. Nice rebound by Michelle, and she puts it right back up and in. Good job fighting underneath by Barakas. Bump on to number 12, Tori Barakas. from the corner. A good job underneath, though, by Tamika. She's able to get the offensive rebound. Gets the foul against uh, Barakas. It's her first Three. personal Three. game. Her first. Third Since team Mich foul. Michelle's come in, you're starting to see a little bit of that interior toughness that got him on the right track against Hampshire last time out. Don't want to build on that. Thompson returning to the game as well. Nice drive by Real as she's forcing the action there and getting the personal foul. She'll go to the line for two. Almost got the shot to follow. Foul on number four, Annabelle Leonard, her first fourth team foul. Free throw remaining for Real as the Highlanders trail by the score of 17 to 7. 40 seconds remaining here in the first quarter. Real's second shot is good. Cuts the lead to single digits as Von Bond comes back across the timeline. is no good with the three-pointer. Good open look, though, for Alyssa. Got a chance for the last shot here. Got to make it count. Real gets called for the travel there. So with 6.6 .6 seconds remaining, Fontbonne will have a chance now for their last shot of the quarter. Full court pressure being applied by Somerville, and they are able to get the turnover as Lovelenius comes away with it. She's tied up there as the jump ball possession arrow will go to Fontbonne. have just enough time to get a shot up. 1.6 seconds from the corner. And it is good as Amanda Cristiani puts that one in. And that rounds out the first. Some of eight. Fun Bond Academy, 20. Score at the end of the first quarter. Eight to 20 as the Highlanders trail. Tori Baracus, very, very uh, good for Fun Bond there with her outside shooting. Uh, Good job by the Highlanders adjusting midway through that quarter, though. They were able to get out defensively on those outside shots. Um, that's something we'll, we'll definitely look for as uh, the game continues, as adjustments are made. Got to watch out for the overcommit, but for the most part, doing a great job closing out on shooters. And uh, like you said, that's going to be big coming through. A lot of shooters for Fonbon. And uh, I don't know if you want to consider this a silver lining or not, but the Lady Highlanders have already equaled their halftime score from the last outing. That is an excellent point, as a matter of fact. 
As we look at leading scores from that quarter, Toy Baracus, or Baracus, the uh, leading scorer for Fun Fun with 11 points in the quarter, and Tamika Michelle, the leading, leading scorer for the Highlanders as she got four points. Some excellent job down low. Uh, using that size advantage down low, a, a good job getting position, able to put the ball back up and get those four points off of rebounds. Maury, we're going to start sounding like broken records, but that is the advantage right now for all the skill that Fompon has. It doesn't seem like they want to mix it up inside. Excellent point there. As the Highlanders will inbounds directly in front of us to open out here the second quarter of play. Love Linnaeus with the ball over to Hatchie. Linnaeus with a nice interior pass there, but no finish. Michelle with the rebound, can't get it in either. It's exactly what you gotta do though. Great take from Thompson on that one. Outside shot is no good for Fompon, but they're able to get the offensive board. Forced out of bounds though, as Christiana stepped on the line, and the Lady Highlanders will get the ball back. That was an excellent entry pass there by Love Linnaeus as she yeah. looked down low to Thompson. Uh, great job, uh, Thompson with good positioning down low, a great height advantage. Full half a there. foot on her man right now. Rayel will take the shot, it's no good. Show cannot get the rebound that time. Another outside shot. That one a two-pointer. Fun fun number four. Annabelle Leonard. Good offensive board there once again. Hatchie will line it up from the corner, and the three is good for Alyssa Hatchie as she gets her first points of the contest. Three. Offense already looking much, much better here in the second quarter for the Lady Highlanders. Looks like Love Linnaeus down there in the land of the Giants coming down with an offensive board as we look at Alyssa Hatchell's three-pointer. Steps back. Nothing but the bottom of the net there from the right corner. You kind of have to make it when you have enough time to check to make sure you're behind the line. Kiara Correa coming in for the Highlanders. Love Linnaeus will take a seat over on the bench. Shot is good. Coming from the Korea. Lady Highlanders is using a high screen that time, something that uh, they probably could have used earlier in this game. Come on, number 24, Samyon Howard. The interior. As Michelle gets the foul, will go to the line for two. Uh, the ball, number 12, Tori Barikas, her second, sixth team foul. Second ball. personal there on Tori Barikas. Her shot is good. Timeout, Fun Fun Academy. Timeout taken by Fun Fun Academy as Somerville's come out here in the second half done an excellent job offensively. Unfortunately, they've only been able to uh, cut it to a 10-point lead here for Fompon. Is Fompon also able to work their offense pretty well as also? Absolutely, but hey, you're winning the second quarter right now. Keep it up by bits and pieces. You'll get right back in this game. The way they're playing right now, it's what we've been talking about, and it's good to see. Lady Highlanders a definitive size advantage 
and uh, so they were having some difficulty. It looked like, especially in the first quarter, with the trapping defense that uh, Fontbonne was bringing against them. Well, we've seen the 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 uh, adjustment that we've seen them make uh, a lot more help in terms of uh, the runners coming towards the uh, ball handler and also not picking up their dribble in in precarious situations near the backcourt, over in the corners, things like that. And uh, we've seen turnovers minimized for the uh, for the Highlanders, something they definitely need to continue working on, though. Well, they're playing smarter. The uh, the press was giving them fits early in the game, but now they've calmed it down, taken a breath, and they're making good decisions out there. It's Tamika at the line for one more free throw here. Second free throw is no good. Offensive rebound is fought for, but pulled away by Funkbun. Find the shooter. Barakas with the three-pointer is no good, though. All the people to leave open. Nice backside rebound by Hatchie. She'll bring it down the floor. Tries to take it all the way. Gets kind of an in-between jump shot there. No good, though. Well, tried to put it high off the backboard, wouldn't fall for her, though. Another Ray big block. block. <laughs> That's three blocks on the game thus far by, Tami by uh, Gabriella Thompson. And when we're talking about the size advantage, size doesn't necessarily just mean height. We said it right when this quarter started. It doesn't look like Fontbonne wants any part of them on the inside, and uh, with plays like that, maybe that's for a good reason. Gabriel Vieira working the ball inside now. Fortunately, the turnover back to Fontbonne is they're going to run it the other way. And the travel is called as Ari Howard took the extra step there. Another great defensive possession. Seems like they're really starting to roll here. Haley Williams will check back into the game for Michelle. Shot is no good there for Korea. Pump on back the other direction. Little out of position defensively there. They gave the baseline drive up and the foul is what occurs as that's going to be the first personal foul well, against Gabriella Thompson. Number 23, Gabrielle Thompson, her first eight team foul. Howard makes her first free throw. Second free throw is no good. Thompson comes away with the rebound. And Somerville working it up the floor against that press. Hatchie able to get it across, but is forced out of bounds as Annabelle Larnard had the positioning along the sideline. Well, I've seen a better job than moving the ball, not getting ruffled, trying to bring it up against pressure. That time, just a little bit too much dribbling from Hatchie. Well, travels called against Fump on another turnover to Somerville. Somerville trailing by 11 points here with 3.43 remaining in the first half of play. Now we're going to see that pressure set itself, the trapping pressure, but Somerville able to break through that as Haley Williams gets it down near the basket, and it is good. Almost number 25, Haley Williams. Some great passing that time. That's what you've got to do to break the pressure as Howard drives in from the left side and is fouled going in for the bucket. 
Foul is going to go against Gabriella Thompson. That's her second personal. Doing a lot better job finding the open person instead of trying to force it to the nearest person on the break now. Howard's first free throw is good. As Thompson will take a seat on the bench, Michelle checks in. Also, Correa will go over to the bench as well. And Somerville is going to take the time out there as Coach O'Halloran will huddle up, try to figure out what they can do to pull back this 11 point deficit they find themselves with. 27 16 is the score as Fontbonne Academy leads the Lady Highlanders by, with uh, 3 minutes and 23 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. We've definitely seen the offense, though, look a lot smoother here in the second quarter of play, Ben. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and with Michelle just checking in right now again for Thompson, who picked up those two quick fouls, you'd imagine they'd keep trying to work it inside. Both of those ladies having a great game on the interior, and uh, it's working for them. Why, why try and do anything else? <laughs> yeah, Not to say pass up open shots, but... <laughs> you know, right now they're... They, and specifically that last time down the floor when the press was set up perfectly to go against them but they were able to break the pressure with some very nice passing up to mid mid court and then right down to Haley Williams as she was able to finish there around the basket that's how you got to break the pressure and Fontbonne's going to bring that pressure every single time that uh, the Highlanders are inbounding as we can see they're setting up the press once again one two one one full court press going on Another excellent job breaking the pressure as Hatchie brings it all the way down floor. But unfortunately, the turnover happens underneath the basket. Fump on back the other direction. And two chances there, but both of them no good for Barakas. And Tamika coming away with the rebound. And on the tie up on the possession, Fump on will keep possession. Foul called there as Tuitt was driving to the basket. Balls on. Some Some great little passing little from the Ducks that the time. They get an first. open shot inside. Tenth team foul. Tenth team foul against the Lady Highlanders. So for the remaining 249 of this half, Fontbonne will be shooting two. Tuitt makes her first free throw. as Gabby Vieira heads to the bench. Jennifer Cremoni coming back in. Second free throw, no good, but rebounded by Fompon. Three-pointer is up, and it's good. Fompon's number four, Annabelle Leonard for three. Chief looking for the three, it's no good. It's two, it will come away with a rebound for Fonbon. Barakas tries the three pointer, it's no good. Offensive rebound underneath. Knocked out of bounds for some of the Fonbon will maintain possession as. Vieira returns to the game. Love Linnaeus with some great positioning underneath. Not, not the largest uh, physical oh. presence out there, but able to get great position and causes the foul, and now she's got herself a one-on-one -on -one situation on the other end of the floor with that. You saw her pick up a few blocks in the last game as well, proving that you don't need to be the tallest, you just need to give the most effort, and sometimes it'll work out for you. 
that's a seventh team foul against Fontbonne. So the one and one here for Love. And the first one's good. Second shot by Linnaeus. No good on that one. Patchy took kind of a kind of a hard fall there. As she was going for the rebound. Sparakis will take the baseline drive, and she's fouled going to the basket. Yeah, it's a tough floor to take a spill on. I saw Hatchie come up a little bit slow on that last uh, one. Able to get 10, back on Andrea defense Trail, though. Her third. She's so tough. Absolutely, very incredibly tough player. Yeah. Four-year All-Star senior starting soccer goalie. Saw some of that toughness last game, seeing it again here today, and especially on that last play. Yeah. Alyssa will head to the bench. Taylor Williams comes in. Also, Pimentel checking in for the Lady Highlanders. Was going to go back to Fontbonne as it was last touched by Somerville. Nice defense there by Somerville. Pointer is up. It's no good from the right corner. Oh, it was halfway in, too. <laughs> Fighting for the rebound. Last, last touch by Fontbonne that time. Somerville will get the ball. Somerville switched up to a man to man defense. They did that midway through the first quarter, and it's really, really helped out as. Uh, Oh, yeah. Fontbonne's outside shooting has been minimized here. Yeah, absolutely. Good adjustment from Coach there. Fontbonne, Academy's number five, Colleen Tewitt Hurt first. Tewitt called for the foul. As to Mika Michelle back to the free throw strike for two. First shot is no good. It's a short rest for Hatchie there. Yeah, she's right back in the game. Can't keep Alyssa out very long. <laughs> to make a second shot, it's no good. Bump on back down floor quickly. They'll set their offense though with just under a minute remaining here in the first half. <laughs> foul goes also against goes number 15, Hatchie. Hatchie, her second. That's her second personal foul. Leah Simmons at the line for Fompa. Misses the first. Bump on once again with the long offensive rebound. As Simmons tries the three from the left wing, no good. Nice block there by Love Lenius, but Fomp on able to recover it. As Simmons drives in, she gets her shot attempt blocked as well. Good hustle play by who else? Alyssa Hatchie. Tying up the ball, getting a possession for the Lady Highlanders. 25 seconds remaining here in the first half as Linnaeus from the left wing is no good. 
Fighting down low for the rebound, though, was Jenny Cr Jen Cremoni. She'll go to the line for one and one, and she was fouled. Leonard, second. Rebound out of bounds off of Fontbonne. Somerville will have possession with 19 seconds remaining in the half. First quarter had a chance to get the last shot and ended up throwing it out of bounds. Hoping for a little bit more positive outcome this time. Patchy with the three from the right wing, no good. Five seconds left here in the half as Fontbonne brings it down. Brackus tries the shot the from the right block, but it's no good at the end of the first half of play. Somerville trailing the Ducks of Fump on Academy by a score of 32 to 17. You are watching Somerville Lady Highlanders basketball action on Somerville Educational Channel 15. And we are back on Somerville Educational Channel 15 for the second half of action here between the Somerville Lady Highlanders and the Fump on Academy Lady Ducks. I'm Todd Harmon alongside Ben Holt. As we look to the second half of play here, the Lady Highlanders trailing as we move to the second half by a score of 32 to 17. Fontbonne will inbounds and have possession to begin the second half. Uh, the uh, ha Lady Highlanders have 15 points they've got to make up. What's the difference that we're seeing so far, Ben? Well, when they switched to that man-to-man -man partway through the first quarter, you took away that outside shot, and that was good, but now they're cutting to the basket. So, a little bit more adjustment is needed. This is certainly the lesser of two evils, though. A lot more manageable from a defensive standpoint. And they're starting to work it inside a little bit. You see Thompson starting out on the floor. They'll probably try to work it inside to her now. As Pimentel takes the shot from the right block, Thompson right there on the weak side for the rebound, but cannot finish. Ah, oh, almost made me look smart. Happens so rarely, you know. <laughs> Fontbonne back the other direction. Hey, you, talk, you talked about how the defense, uh, they switched to the man-to-man. -man. As Tuit able to put in the three-pointer. Uh, we talked about the man-to-man, -man, but nobody was covering her there. Well, that's, that's the thing about man-to-man. Got to have coverage on it. Got to have a man. <laughs> Pimentel's double team down in the low block, and she'll turn it over there. And Tuit has it now across the timeline. As the outside shot is no good. For Cristiani and Somerville coming back the other direction is Alyssa Hatchy with the runner from the right is good. Ooh, nice quick spin off the block there. After Somerville had made that adjustment to the man-to-man, -man, we saw a lot of turnovers occur from Fontbonne on travels. There were a lot of situations where they, they, I believe they had about five travel calls against them and another one to open up this quarter. However, two it able to drive to the basket for two. Well, you're seeing that overcommit again from the Lady Highlanders. You need to be careful when you're doing that. It's, uh, you know, if you have to give up a contested three, it's a lot better than an uncontested layup. Leah Simmons will check in for the Lady Ducks. Somerville trailing here by a score of 19 to 37. Lissy Hatchie with the ball in the corner. And another turnover for the Lady Highlanders. That's gonna go as a foul against Gabriella Thompson. That's her third personal foul, foul there. Number 23. Early in the second half yeah. of play. Yeah. First team foul. You know, Coach O'Halloran was trying to avoid that for sure. <laughs> Offensive bound, board pulled down by Fontbonne. Another offensive board is Barak. Barikas works, fights for it down low, but she's not able to hit it in Somerville back the other direction. Is Love Linius taking it all the way for the layup. Strong take to the hole on that one. 
Fopbaum with a missed shot. Somerville coming back the other direction. Jin Cremoni now running, leading the break. Kicks it out to Linnaeus on the right wing. Miscommunication there as Cremoni was coming towards the ball. Love Linnaeus thought she was going to go the other direction. Well, we're seeing it time and time again. Anytime they get a little bit of momentum going, a miscommunication here, a miscue there, and you're right back to square one. Leah Simmons tries the three from the corner. It's no good. Howard able to undercut Thompson there and get the rebound and put up the shot and good. Howard, one of the leading scorers for Fump on, and she has five points in this game. That's seven points now for her. Fump on back the other direction as Lovelinius is going to get called for the foul. Prevented the easy layup, though, as Larnard had a direct oh, line to the basket. Larnard back to the line of, back to the free throw stripe, I should say, for two. Well, that's a problem that's been plaguing him, not getting back on defense. So a few different Lady Highlanders try and take the easy way out, staying in the backcourt, just trying to force the turnover instead of getting back to stop the fast break, ends up costing them. Larnard misses the first. Second free throw is good. That's Larnard's eighth point of the game as Linnaeus is tied up but the possession arrow goes to Somerville. The inbounds comes to Hatchie, and she travels with it immediately. So another turnover going back to Fontbon. Gabrielle Vieira checking into the game now. Somerville back into the zone look now. Leah Simmons open for the three from the left wing. No good. Howard with the rebound. And she's going to get the foul. Looks like Thompson may be called for her fourth personal oh, here. Number nope. Nope. Gave it to Cremoni. Goes against Cremoni. That's her third personal. Third team foul. Not sure I saw that one. Not sure I saw that one either, to be honest with you. Howard doing a good job clearing out. Not a lot of height, but uh, able to get good position and was able to get up and get the foul with the body is what was called. I really didn't see it on that one though, I have to admit. Howard's first free throw was good. Second one is no good. Thompson with the rebound. Hatchie looking to get the ball inside of Thompson, but stolen away by Fompon as Howard comes back the other direction. Her shot is no good. And Jen Cremoni now brings it across the timeline. She will drive it down the right-hand side of the lane and pull it back out. Vera looking to get it back to Linnaeus. Stolen by Howard. Howard coming back the other direction as she's fouled by Linnaeus. Driving in for the layup. She'll go to the line 4 2. Fouls and solos. Number one, left the line. Linus, first, second, fourth team foul. So Linus' is second personal foul. Well, the deficit is 20 now, and you are running out of time, but that doesn't mean you got to rush on offense. You're seeing the Lady Highlanders really force a lot out there, and it's costing them. As we've talked about throughout the game so far, they definitely have a size advantage in the low block, but offensively they seem, like you just pointed out, they seem to be rushing right now, trying to play kind of one on, one on five, just whoever has the ball driving and then picking up their dribble and making an errant pass or an errant shot after that. So the three-pointer is up from the corner, it's no good, but Howard once again there for the rebound. Howard with the three from the right wing, no good. Rebound pulled away by Vieira this time as Gabby will bring it up four. 
screen set there by Cremone. Off the screen, Vieira drives down the lane. No good, but she gets the foul. She'll go to the line for two. Once again, one of the few instances we've seen oh, the them of using a high two, screen second, to get to the line out of it. Foul. Gabby's first free throw is no good. Bump on again. This bump on will take the timeout with 3.08 remaining here in the third quarter of play. Somerville trailing by the score of 42 to 21. It seems like whenever Somerville comes down, they're able to set their offense. Good things happen, you know. Uh, Vieira able to get to the uh, line here for free throws or whenever they're able to get a good entry pass to the interior. Uh, Thompson with that large size advantage and underneath, uh, you know, almost a foot and a half it looks like sometimes she's got yeah. over her defender. And uh, if they're able to get the ball into her, she's been able to make some things happen along with uh, Tamika Michelle as well. Um, as a matter of fact, Michelle, the leading scorer for the uh, Lady Highlanders in the first half of play. She had five points there in the first half. We're going to need a heavy dose of that inside offense to have a chance again back into this game. So coming out of the timeout here, Vieira will be at the line with one free throw. Gabby gets the shooter's roll, and it's good. To it back down the floor. Nice steal there as Cremoni steps into the passing lane, steals the bounce pass over to Hatchie. Looking underneath Torreo, knocked away by Fompon. Somerville will inbounds from underneath their own basket. Oh, good to see him get out in transition. Maybe one pass too many that time, though. Hatcher will take the three from the right corner. No good, short. Rebound as Fompon comes away with it. Cristiani not able to control it there, but it goes out off of Somerville. Fompon will inbounds under their basket. Borikas back Timeout into the game for Fompon as the timeout is called by Somerville. In the first quarter of play, Borikas, number 12 for uh, Fompon, scored 11 points, two three pointers. Uh, it was basically her outside shooting that had a lot to do with the change from the zone into the man to man. In the second quarter of play, Barikas was held to only one point off of a free throw. So it might be a situation here where Coach O'Halloran is now going to remind his players, you know, 12s who we have to watch out for, maybe even switch back to the man to man as they look at what they might do here defensively against Fompa. Absolutely. She was uh, certainly in the first quarter their best player out there. Got to know where she is at all times. If not, switch your scheme entirely to compensate. So the Highlanders trailing here by 20, score 42 to 22. Consolation game of the 15th annual Highlander Holiday Hoop Fest. Lots of H's in that. You did a good job anyway. Thank you, thank you very much. <laughs> Alliteration is the key to life. <laughs> Fomp on inbounding to the left of their basket. Good defense there by Somerville, not allowing the shot. As Shaley Monahan was looking for it, but not able to get free for it. 
bump on inbounding once again. And Howard travels. Good defense there by Somerville on the inbounds. Really locked down the interior. No space to go for Howard there. Stramoni will bring the ball down into the paint. Kicks it out. Rayo passes up the three. She'll take the two, though, <laughs> and make it. Great pump fake. Rikas with a little head fake there was able to get the head fake and all the movement from the <laughs> defender and then drive to get the foul. And that's going to be the fourth foul against Andrea Real. Two minutes remaining here in the third quarter of play. And Barikas with the baseline drive, puts up the layup for two. Love Linius now running the point for the Highlanders. So the runner in the lane is no good, but the rebound is taken and put back in by Korea. Korea. Much better job on the offensive end that time. Marikas once again with the drive. Gotta find her. Number 12, Victoria. Just let her Marikas. walk right into the basket that time. Linnaeus tried the crossover. It gets her pocket picked from behind by Howard. Howard, though, unable to finish on the other end. And Linnaeus gets the rebound and takes the extra step on the turnover back to Fontbonne. 58 seconds remaining here in the third quarter. And there's Barikas from the left corner, no good. Give it an underneath. Another block there as Thompson gets her fourth block of the game. Linnaeus back the other direction. She gets her pocket picked once again. It's two, it steals it from behind. Shot is up, no good as Thompson fighting for the rebound on the floor. It's going to be a jump ball and the possession arrow is going to Somerville. Pimentel coming back into the game for the Highlanders. 22 seconds left here in the third quarter. If they want to, the Highlanders can hold for the last shot. So the shot clock is off. Williams with a nice entry pass to Thompson. Thompson no good from the right block though. Fomp on back the other direction. As Barikas with the three pointer from the left wing, no good. After three, Summerville 26. Academy, 46. After three quarters of play, the Lady Highlanders trailing the Lady Ducks of Fontbonne Academy by 20 by the score of 46 to 26. Yeah. Let's look at leading scorers from that quarter. Colleen Tuitt, the leading scorer for Fontbonne with five points. Leading scorer, actually four. Uh, Somerville Lady Highlanders putting a basket in each two points apiece as Alyssa, uh, Alyssa Hatchie, Love Linius, Andrea Rayo, and Kiara Correa. All with baskets in that quarter for the Highlanders. Well, it's all about finishing strong now, trying to give yourself something to feel good about after this game, something to build on. And uh, you're down by a lot, you're down by 20. But it hasn't felt like a blowout. It's just been a couple things here and there that they haven't been able to execute. And uh, namely, the turnovers. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. just giving away offensive possessions. Not only that, but giving up easy baskets going the other way in transition. That's been the difference today. This thump on wind bounds directly in front of us here at midcourt. So we begin the fourth quarter of action here. Simmons with the two from the right wing is no good. Thompson with the rebound. Gets it off to Pimentel. Pimentel bringing it on down floor. She tries the little left-handed underneath runner. It's no good, but she gets the foul. So that foul is going to go against Annabelle Lerner. It's her third personal foul as Pimentel at the line, 4-2. Bimentel did a great job taking a shot to the basket that time. So we saw her do quite a bit in the previous game. Pimentel, a freshman for the Lady Highlanders. Had an excellent second half against Hampshire. Misses both free throws though. That is not And Barikas. Number 12, Dory Barikas. A little bit of movement from Fonbon on the offensive end that time. Just cut the Lady Highlanders defense all out of sorts. As Fonbon with the steal, brings it back the other direction. open from the left wing. Can't find any of the basket that time though. Somerville will inbounds. As Pimentel will take a seat on the bench. Correa back into the game. Jen Cremoni running the point now. A red idea, trying to work the entrance pass. Uh, a little bit too much muscle on it, though. To it open from the left side. The Lady Highlanders defense just getting broken down by some diagonal passes through the lane right now. Patchy tried to find Thompson. Thompson tried to get the shot off, but didn't really have full possession of the ball. Pimmon. I should say Fompon back the other direction now. Patchy getting the rebound. Cremoni for three, and it's good for Jin Cremoni. Ooh, got all of that one. A couple steps behind the line. Fumpon Academy is Leah Simmons good Leah Simmons. back the other direction for Fumpon. As we have a timeout on the floor with 531 remaining here in the game. Somerville trailing 52 to 29. That was a long distance three-pointer by Jen Cremoni there. It really was. Got a couple big steps behind the line. Flashing some impressive range there. <laughs> now, as we talked about, as we opened out this game, both of these, both of these programs, both of these uh, teams traditionally um, have battled for championships in this Holiday Hoops Fest. Uh, not the case this year, as both teams, younger teams, trying to find their way here early in the season. Uh, as you can see, we see the senior leadership from Barikas in terms of uh, what she's done with, uh, let's see here, 18 points so far today on the uh, Highlanders side of the ledger. Uh, Melissa Hatchie 
one of the uh, senior leaders out there with five points for the uh, Lady Highlanders. Also Haley Williams as well, uh, three points out there. Well, both young teams. Obviously, Fonbon with Barikas, a bit of veteran leadership, but for the most part, both sides crafting identity still early in the season for both teams. Absolutely. Patchy has it. She'll pass it off to Michelle. Michelle banks it in for two. Nice job by Thompson as she gets her hands up and blocks the pass. Back the other direction, it's Hatchy, and it's no good as Howard will take it back the other direction. A lot of back and forth action here. Howard can't finish, and Correa comes away with the rebound. She'll look to go coast to coast. Not able to finish on that end though as Barikas comes away with the rebound, and Leah Simmons will cherry pick that basket Simmons. she was far back up court. Well, he looks smart when it works. Definitely does. So Alyssa Hatchie with the three-point shot gets the bounce for the three. I'll call that a shooter's roll. Fompom working their offense as Tewitt open for the two from the left side. Cremoni working off the screen. Tries the entrance pass and Simmons seals it away as Thompson, a little frustrated, gives her a hug. Follow them, number 23. Can we have Thompson first four? Thompson's fourth six personal foul, foul of the game. That's 16 fouls now on the Lady Highlanders. Barikas once again driving to the basket. Finishing with the layup. Just passing three minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in the game. As Rayo with the runner from the right side, no good. Howard with the rebound, coming back the other direction for Fontbon. Two, it's going to pull it back out. They'll set their offense. And when I say set their offense, I mean they're going to pass the ball to Barikas and she's going to try to score. But I am broke, don't fix it. <laughs> Starting to resemble the Hampshire game a little bit with uh, the uh, transition after transition opportunity for the Highlanders' opponents, especially coming off of turnovers from the Lady Highlanders. Islanders with the ball now with two minutes and 50 seconds remaining in the game, trailing 58 to 34. Pimentel kicks it off to Williams. She'll go to the right side to Rayo. Rayo with the runner, and it's good. Full court pressure here for the Lady Highlanders. And Pimentel will knock that one out of bounds, reaching in looking for the steal. Pompon will take the timeout. As Somerville ratcheted up the defensive pressure to the full court level there. Two minutes, 33 seconds left in this game. Lady Howlanders trailing 58 to 36. Consolation game of the 15th annual Highlander Holiday Hoop Fest. As later on this evening, we're The Red Raiders of Hampshire Regional will take on the Needham High School Rockets for the championship of the Highlander Hoop Fest. Highlander Holiday Hoop Fest, I should say. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say Hampshire is going to win that game. 
very impressive when we saw them last time a couple days ago. Uh, be be very surprised if they didn't come away with it. Of course, it's not like Needham back into this game either. They yeah. deserve to be there. Should be a fun game. Absolutely it should, no question about that. As with 2.33 remaining in this game, the consolation game, Fompon will be inbounding. As two, it runs the point for them. The runner is no good in the paint, but two, it comes away with the rebound. Gets it out to Barikas, who will reset the offense. Backdoor cut there for Howard. Just got burned on that cut. Great Pivotone. movement off the ball from Howard there, though. Credit where it's due. <laughs> Pimentel flashing open at the foul line. She puts it up and it's good. Islanders continue to add pressure there, looking for the full court press. Pump on able to break it though. And Monahan will go to the line for two. Fouls on some of those, number 12, Tamika Michael for first. Foul goes against Tamika Michelle. Seventh team foul. First shot for Monahan is good. Second shot, no good. Rebound by Tamika, but stolen away by Fontbon. Pimentel gets into the passing lane, but knocks it out of bounds, and Fompon will maintain possession. Those turnovers continuing to plague the Lady Highlanders. Got to be more careful on the ball. Pimentel gets her shot blocked. Fompon coming back the other direction. That's going to be the offensive foul. Excellent job by Gabrielle Vieira getting position there on the right block, drawing that charge. Hey, it's tough to take those when you know the hit's coming. Well done. Third team foul. Rayo in the corner, looks to Pimentel at the top of the keys. No good. Rayo gets the rebound and. She gets the runner to the right-hand side, and it's good. Number 10, Andrea Rio. 35 seconds remaining in the game as Howard has it on the right wing. The runner is up and good for Annabelle Larnard. Shot clock is off. 17 seconds left in the game as Pimentel has the ball. She'll drive into the lane. The left-handed runner is up and it's good. Really seeing Pimentel starting to come alive here, just like she did last second half. Number five, Melina Pimentel. And that's going to do it. And at the end, of Somerville, as 42. Somerville. Cosmon Academy, 63. Loses this one by a score of 42 to 63 here in the consolation game of the Highlander Holiday Hoop Fest. Well, Ben, as we see the players lining up to shake hands. Well, Highlanders 0-2 uh, here at the uh, Holiday Hoop Fest. Uh, 42 points in this game, though. Um, a nice offensive output, actually, in this game. I do believe we've yeah. seen some. We, we see some bright spots. Uh, you know, defensively, Gabrielle Thompson down low, 
Um, yep. Definitely a bright spot. Four Absolutely. blocks on the game tonight. Uh, Melina Pimentel is somebody who, as a freshman, um, we're seeing her develop a little bit more. She's had a good good fourth quarter in today's game, a good second half in the uh, game on uh, on Saturday as well. The leadership of Alyssa Hatchie, the toughness of Alyssa Hatchie as well, uh, very, very vital. Um, basically, we're, you know, it's a team that's in, in transition and in yeah. development. Um, we need to, we need some uh, some ball control action, though, I do believe. Absolutely. Take care of the ball out there. It's, it's killed them last game. It killed them today, too. It's, uh, it's, it's going to look like it was a blowout. You clamp down on that ball. Make sure you take care of it. Probably a lot more positive of a box score when you're looking at it tomorrow and going into the next game. So as we look to the future for the Lady Highlanders, um, I don't unfortunately have that the, the schedule directly in front of me, but uh, we will definitely have a broadcast coming up down the road um, as Somerville looks to uh, continue their season looking to defend their Greater Boston League title. Um, it uh, will be an interesting season as we watch this team develop. We, uh, we will uh, move on for the remainder of the season as we have uh, the end of our coverage of the Highlander Holiday Hoop Fest here on Somerville Educational Channel 15. I'm Todd Harmon, he's Ben Holt. Thank you very much for joining us here on Somerville Educational Channel 15 as the Lady Highlanders lose by the score of 42 to 63 to the Falcon Academy Ducks. Thank you very much.